Welcome to the Health Science Podcast, sponsored by the National Health Association. I'm your host, Dr. Frank Sabatino. I'm also the Director of Health Education for the uh, National Health Association, the NHA. And uh, I'm very pleased on our first, first episode, this is exciting for us, uh, a new venture with the association to have as my guests, Mark and Wanda Uberman, uh, the President and Executive Director of the association, respectively. Mark had a, a long uh, professional career as an attorney in the state of Ohio, uh, serving as magistrate to both juvenile and domestic courts, assisting uh, the magistrates in Ohio. But for the last dozen years, he's certainly been wearing the hat of the president of the NHA, while Wanda at his side, really the, the executive director and really uh, pushing this thing forward. So uh, I'm just so happy to have them as guests here on our first episode as we kick off this incredible venture for the National Health Association. Welcome to the Health Science Podcast, brought to you by the National Health Association, the oldest organization in the world, championing the extraordinary benefits of a whole plant food diet and healthy lifestyle, as well as water-only fasting. We believe that health results from healthful living and focus on evidence-based science that promotes the health of you and your loved ones, as well as the health of all animals and the environment. We feature experts from a cross-section of disciplines within the plant nutrition, vegan, psychological, environmental, and animal compassion sectors. I'm your host, Dr. Frank Sabatino, the NHA's Director of Health Education. Welcome, my dear friends, Mark and Wanda Uberman. How's everybody? It's great to be here, Frank. Yeah, I'm so excited. I was so excited because, you know, you know how important this association has been to me. And as it approaches its 75th birthday, which is really remarkable to say, um, Mark, your your story is perhaps the most unique situation I've encountered, really. I mean, I don't know anybody from the baby boomer generation who was raised from birth as a vegan, as a plant-based individual. And I mean, we can, we can give credit to uh, your parents, Mark, uh, Ruth and Max, who were really pioneers in the health food industry. And it's safe to say that when this association began in 48, and when you were born a few years later, you've basically spent your entire adult life in a plant-based world and connected and working with this organization. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your story? Well, it has been a privilege. My parents were, as you say, uh, Max and Ruth were really pioneers in this health movement. My father, I like to say, was uh, had a compost pile before people knew what organic gardening was. And we pumped well water before people knew, before people thought about fluoridated water and pure water. And he always had open windows for fresh air. And he always exercised, always had a slant board, always had a juice machine, always had a blender before blenders became fashionable. They were way ahead of the game. And uh, to give me that blessing as a birthright to raise me on the Sheltonian raw food plant-based diet is just something for which um, I'm eternally grateful and consider myself incredibly lucky. Um, Wonder your attraction to the association. I know you had a, a professional career about close to 30 years in the casualty insurance industry. And, you know, you, what, what was the aha moment for you really? What attracted you to the whole plant-based world and and really to the society and the association itself. Yeah, well, I give Max and Ruth Huberman much credit. When Mark and I were first dating, I already had a five-year-old and she was scheduled for the typical tonsils and adenoid surgery. And they introduced me to a couple of the books and I only made subtle changes. Took her back a few months later after making those changes for her pre-op and the doctors never did the surgery. They had no idea how to explain it. Um, And her whole life growing up plant-based, she did not require that surgery. So that was a huge dramatic moment. And so how many years ago was that one, really, when that took place? That five-year-old will be 40 in (laughs) February. That's pretty amazing itself. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, When we look at this association, uh, you know, being able to interview what I'll call the power couple of the NHA today, which is really my pleasure, my privilege. Um, As I reflect, gave me a chance to reflect on the association. And when you think about it, this association was founded by some incredible hygienic pioneers in 1948. 
And when you think about that, at that time, there were only several thousand people in the U.S. that even had television sets. Color TV didn't even come into 1954. This association has maintained itself 75 years through 11 different presidents, several wars, emotion of uh, both economic and social upheavals across time. And, you know, knowing how difficult it is for a business or an association to stay afloat in light of the various challenges that occur, how would you explain, what would you, what, what do you think are the things that were most important for really the longevity of this association as it approaches its 75th anniversary? I find it mind blowing and remarkable. I think the biggest thing, uh, Frank, is that we have been uh, an education organization, a 501c3 from day one. We've never sold anything but information and education. Um, we don't sell pills. We don't sell, we don't sell DVD sets. We don't sell, we've just sold education. We've sold the health results from healthful living. And we've, we've sold at our conferences, uh, those kind of powerful truths that was it Dr. Shelton said, let us have the truth or the heavens fall. One of our founders, you know, we've been, we've been preaching that truth that health is something that you can be within your own control. You can control your own health destiny through healthful living. And I, I think a lot of people, uh, certainly a dedicated vanguard of people did that for a long time. But, you know, you think back into the 50s, there were some vegetarians out there. Veganism came in a little bit later. But we've been, we've been the source of what you would call today's modern whole foods, plant-based health movement. It kind of has sprung from us. So I think we were just ahead of the time, way ahead of the time, but we've never lost our principles. We've never less lost our standards. And uh, I think we, we remain kind of the conscience of the whole food plant-based health movement. So there've been dedicated leaders that came before me. Uh, I just have the privilege of having been around a lot of them because I've been around a while. It's been, it's been a fun ride. I mean, even as a teenager, you were on the board of directors of this organization. Think about that. When I became 18 years old, I, they, yeah, I was so you know, your, board. Yeah, your commitment over time has been amazing. You know, Dr. Shelton used to say, you're free to make choices, but you're not free to choose consequences. And the organization has always been uh, remarkable because I want to really emphasize that fact that this has been a commercial-free organization. And I think people need to really let that roll around in their minds a little bit because everything usually has, you know, advertising and vested interests. This organization has always made its bones on selling people on themselves. This incredible power that we have within that when you really create the healthful living circumstances, health will follow as the natural outcome of that. And for some reason that resonated in such a way to keep this thing afloat over such a long period of time. And the people that you know, you, you've attracted with that dance by sticking to that, that really incredibly intrinsic idea of the wisdom of the body and the body's ability to heal. It's just a remarkable thing. And, and I think people need to understand that this is the organization that has been at the vanguard of that. You know, there's other health organizations. None of them have the longevity. This is the oldest one in the world. And it's remarkable for what it has stand, stood for and how it has maintained itself across time. Um, We're also a membership organization, and that's unique, too, that I, I think there's a lot of other organizations that, well, not a lot, but many that advocate a whole food plant-based diet that promote, you know, certain doctors and things like that for what they do. Great work. But we're unique. I, I think we're the only ones that are membership-based. We've always been that way. And uh, we're kind of lay led as well from that standpoint. And, and, and what I like, I think, because of that membership, there's always been this feeling, I think, when you interact with people that have been part of the association, that they really feel like this is home to them. That they really feel like this is an extension of family, as, as Wanda was talking about. We've all raised families. We've all had kids. This whole thing, this organization has been very powerful in really embracing that sense of family and connection. So, you know, there used to be some wild people back in the day, if you recall going way back and it's, you know, they were, they were really staunch, you know, <laughs> supporters and they'd be out there, you know, ready to wield their shields for the support of natural hygiene. But from its inception as the American Natural Hygiene Society to its 
development today through, like I said, all of that course of time, the development of the internet, now using all the platforms that are available to get this message out, it's been a remarkable, remarkable evolution. Um, we're going to take a few moments. Uh, I want to get into a few things with Wanda, too, uh, after this little break. I'm going to take a few moments to uh, get here a word from our sponsor, hear some of the benefits of the things that are coming up, a little bit of the benefits of membership. So we'll take a few moments and we'll be right back. And now to put a smile on the sponsors of the National Health Association, you're listening to the Health Science Podcast Show. I want to remind you to visit the National Health Association website where you'll find incredible resources to support your healthy lifestyle, including plant-exclusive eating without added salt, oil, and sugar. Simply go to healthscience.org or nationalhealthassociation.org. Be sure to check out membership, which is $35 per year for those living within the U.S. and $55 for those living outside the U.S. You'll be amazed at all the information and benefits you'll receive. As a member, you're kept up to date on the latest evidence-based tools for health promotion. You'll receive the incomparable quarterly magazine, Health Science, a beautiful 40-page advertising-free publication mailed to your home or offices, loaded with articles, recipes, inspirational stories, and interviews with world leaders in the fields of personal health, plant-based nutrition, water-only fasting, animal rights, and environmental support, and you'll receive details about life-changing events, such as the 2023 NHA Conference set for June 23 to the 25th, 2023, in Cleveland, Ohio, which will be the NHA 75th Annual NHA Conference. I'm your host, Dr. Frank Sabatino, and now back to the show. Welcome back to the Health Science Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Frank Sabatino, and I'm here with... Uh, Wanda Uberman, the executive director of the NHA, and Mark Uberman, the president. Um, I, I want to touch a little bit on the instrument of Health Science Magazine, too, because I think this is something that people should really understand and know about. Again, a commercial free publication, close to 40 pages, that it's a remarkable uh, magazine that has taken the stand of really trying to provide the evidence base for what we do. Over time, what's beautiful is that the science has caught up and vindicates a lot of what was taught even early on by pioneers that didn't have the advantage of doing research. And now with the people that we've attracted and, and the people of that ilk, and then putting it together in this magazine where you've attracted not only physicians and the knowledge of those kinds of people, but you know, environmental activists and people into animal rights, Speak a little bit about the evolution of Health Science Magazine and, and what it really means to the organization. Well, I, I think, Frank, like you said, uh, I think that, you know, we go back, we, we launched Health Science Magazine in 1978. I think we realized that people needed something for their membership and, and, and something that, that, you know, with people spread all over the country and all over the world, here's a connection that they can get on a quarterly basis that can have not only the health information that they're seeking to to recharge their battery, as my father would say, but we also put in kind of a mix of, of recipes and testimonials and, and member spotlights and to kind of foster that sense of community and connection. And I think that's what that's really uh, a role that Wanda has played um, even my, on a much greater level than I am uh, in the last several years since she's become the executive director of fostering that connection and using the tools of social media to do that. But the magazine was... Uh, was and is remains very unique. Uh, there's plenty of, if you go into any health food store or, or uh, any Barnes and Noble, you'll find many, many vegetarian magazines and vegan magazines and cooking magazines, but mostly they're, they're recipes or 70, 80% of them are recipes. Health science has recipes. They're the gold standard, the SOS free chefs that, that do that, but it's not a recipe magazine. Uh, it's, it's a mix and people tell us that we've got a pretty good mix that it's uh, they read it cover to cover. It's the one magazine they read cover to cover because it's just interesting. It's, it's got variety. And I think you'd agree, Frank, it's pretty high quality. It's as, it's as high quality a publication as you'll find on the newsstand of anywhere. We're, we're very uh, conscious about that. We have some great designers, a great copy editor. So we're really proud of it. Kind of like what you said, the most important thing is we've stuck to our guns 
we don't, there's no advertising you'll find in this 40 page magazine. And, and that's one of the most amazing things about it too, because if you, you, you know, you've, you've referenced these other magazines and health food stores, when you go through them, it almost seems like a catalog for supplements and various kinds of products and things of that nature. And, you know, the NHA has categorically just, you know, stayed away from that. They, they just stayed with that whole food plant-based approach and really are emphasizing the power of that and even have gone to step further now in embracing the idea of having that diet without added salt, oil, and sugar, which is really another level um, of, 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 of inclusion that really not a lot of other people are doing in the vegan world. And, and so this has been kind of a, a, a remarkable evolution of that magazine because the articles are you know unbelievable. And I think we all are in agreement that we're at a stage where we need to expand that evidence base and not only health science, but all the work and all the information you put into the website is going into that. So Wanda, why don't you talk a little bit about, you know, the, the evolution even of the website and how you see what that's going to provide for the longevity of this association, how it may be a legacy that we can leave for people that, that come after. Thanks, Frank. I'd love to. So we reworked the website about two years ago, real, maybe closer to a year ago, um, trying to make it more member based, more member friendly. And as I get the privilege of talking to so many of our members, I can find out what it is they're looking for. And you'll see if you look at our magazines and the website, even from three years ago till today, you're going to see a bigger variety, a bigger inclusion, bigger more diversity and we want it to be like coming to our living room everybody is welcome it doesn't matter what journey you're on taking that first step is the first step and everybody needs to do it and we are just trying to bring as many resources to our members as we can and when you go on the website you're going to see that we have archived 40 some years of magazines so as a member you're getting a, virtu a literal library for that membership price and it's always being updated and there's books on there. And the recipes, I have e-cookbooks made from the recipes and menus we serve at the conference every year. So if you're looking for just easy recipes, you can find those. These chefs can, they make it for 300 people when they've never cooked SOS free before. So they will tell you if they can do it for 300, you can do it for four to six in your household with um, some confidence. And so we're, we've added that where people wanted to travel. We're adding some travel opportunities. People told me they wanted to bring their children to our conferences. So we've added a children's program. People told me they want to exercise. So we've chartered buses and take them to national parks to get some exercise in. And we're just trying to reach out. We've started this wonderful podcast and newsletters to people who aren't maybe ready to become a member. They can still get our free newsletter. We want information available to people because we, we're passionate about this education. So you'll see when you go to the website, there are some locked categories you need to be a member, but very few you can gain an awful lot of information just by going to our website and even perusing that and spending some time before you decide you want to become a member. But I think after looking at what's available and for the low price of the membership, only $35 a year if you're in the US, most people, the common comment I always get is how is it I never heard about you before? So that's the best comment I get because now they have. It's also the most frustrating because we feel like we're doing a lot to get the word out about the work of the National Health Association. And Frank, you're certainly a big help in that part. So thank you. Well, I, you know, look, I'm, I'm here with uh, Mark and Wanda Uberman, the president and executive director of the NHA. Uh, why don't you tell our listeners, you know, how they can uh, how they can find the NHA more easily? You know, where do they go to 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 track you and find you and follow you? Give them a little insight. Yeah, so it's easy. They can go to www.healthscience.org. That's going to be our website. 
And it's a pretty user-friendly website. You'll see some tabs at the top. One's going to say Join and Renew. One's going to say Conference. You just start clicking on those tabs. One's going to be for Events, which is really our plant-based travel. Um, I think there's one for recipes. So you just spend five minutes searching the website. You're going to get a lot of information. You can Google YouTube and you can see a lot of information on YouTube about some of the things that we've done as well. But you know, go ahead. I was going to add the fact that, you know, this podcast is one of our newest outreach. We want to say that, you know, we're, we're in some ways one of the best kept secrets out there. Um, this is a way of unlocking the secret. You know, we're working with some really good uh, public relations people to help spread the word, taking advantage of these tools that are out there. And we are really excited about the podcast and the e-newsletter that's about to drop. Um, and all of these episodes of the Health Science Podcast are going to be archived on the NHA website, just as all the issues of our magazine. So we're really excited about that. And I, I guess I just want to throw a rose to you, Frank, is that you're, you're uh, I, I think we couldn't think of a better person to be launching and hosting the health science podcast than you. I don't of of the of the of the modern day leaders and almost fathers of the modern day uh, health movement of our association. You've been around a long time. There's a lot of people that think. I often say there's a lot of people that think that the whole food plant based health movement began when forks over knives came out in 2011. But we've been around you in particular, you and your colleagues Alan Goldhammer and Joel Furman, Stefan Esser. You guys have been doing this way before these guys have been doing this. We've been championing this for 40 years, and you're unique. I, I guess what I also think is that the Health Science Podcast <laughs> gives you an opportunity, a uniquely positioned person, to offer the kind of unique, almost nuanced view of the of the kind of world of life, the expanding world of lifestyle medicine that the natural hygiene movement and the National Health Association uniquely takes respect for the power of the body to heal itself, something that lifestyle medicine is almost by definition is a is kind of an approach. Food is medicine. We look at it, I think, I think you would agree we look at it a little more broadly about about the the, the, the tools of health. And of course water fasting. And you're as probably as national authority and what and the benefits of water only fasting as anybody on the planet. You and Dr. Alan Goldhammer, you've been doing it longer than anybody. So you're the perfect person not only your great baritone voice and your great sense of humor, but you're one of the broadest, uh, I think we think in the NHA, um, that you're one of the, you have one of the broadest visions of not only health and life and, and the preciousness of our planet, uh, you're uniquely positioned to launch this health science podcast. Everyone, every podcast has a niche. There's a lot of them out there. I, I think you're in a position to, to present the unique niche and viewpoint on so many subjects that the natural hygiene movement and the National Health Association, which has kind of carried that torch for a very long time, uh, can bring to the issues of the day, whether it's whether it's uh, immunization, such a complicated, touchy subject, um, vitamins, supplements, juicing, all of these things. We have a unique, we, you, have a unique perspective and your own personal experience and scholarship. I think Wanda and I and the board of the NHA couldn't think of a better person in whom to 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 place the hands of this of our of the health science podcast. And well, I, I appreciate that coming from you. As you know, this is really a legacy move for me too. The truth of the matter is, I wanted to be able at this stage of my life to give back. And you're so right. A lot of times, people don't realize that. I made the point before that, you know, we have now seen science vindicate what we've been teaching and standing for since the inception of this organization 75 years ago. And people like uh, myself, Dr. Goldhammer, some of the good people that go back, we're doing this like the old country song when it wasn't cool, you know what I'm saying? So it, we, we've caught up with all of that. And it, it's a tremendous opportunity and I, I don't take it lightly to be able to be in this position okay to take whatever role I can in moving the awareness and the consciousness of this organization forward. It's just a remarkable thing. It's the, it's the organization that is most dear to my heart. Like you, I grew up professionally with it. So to have this opportunity now to have this forum where we can interview some of the really amazing people doing work in every aspect 
of health, nutrition, the environment, and so on. It's, it's a, just a remarkable, remarkable opportunity. So I am very thankful for that. I'm very grateful that I got this opportunity from you and the organization. So um, I'm excited about where, where it's going to go forward and what it's going to do for the organization. Uh, Wanda, with that, in, with that said, I, I want to address something else because you and Mark are involved in organizing, and you especially, because I, I, I am really blown away by the energy and the way your organizational skills, because I can organize things, but I look at you and it's kind of, you know, I'm impressed and kind of overwhelmed. Uh, talking about the, the national, the NHA convention, which is really uh, one of the one of the real, you know, incredible things that separate this organization apart from everything else. This annual convention that is not easy to organize. It's got all of its ups and downs, and yet the incredible luminaries that you attract, the kind of information that it shares, the the, the family-centered feeling where people just really feel so interactive with each other. Speak to that just a little bit, because I want people to really understand, you know, what what you've put together, especially over these last number of years, these last several years where you've taken the reins and really pushed it forward. Speak to that just a little bit, because I think people should know about that. Thank you, Frank. It is the heart and soul of what I do. It's um, what's nearest and dearest to my heart probably because 35 years ago when I was learning about this, there wasn't the internet, there weren't all the other places to get information. I went every year to the NHA conference and I learned so much. So it was easy for me to think, how do I want to bring that to people today? And just systematically thinking of what, what you do to take care of folks that are gonna spend a weekend with you. And so it's from finding a great conference center to spending a year working with chefs, making sure they understand what whole food SOS free cooking is about so that it not only tastes fabulous, but looks fabulous. And like you said, maybe the most important thing to me is that sense of community and connection. And so to have a large group of people coming back year after year, and then to have an equally large group of new members and to have people, I've got people starting at five, we've got one girl that started at probably four or five years old. She's 10. She encourages all other children to come and join her to probably 90 year olds. Um, it's just- and what, I also find, what I also find interesting is that people that have been very interested in this overall movement have even committed their funds and time for the education of medical physicians now that they give scholarships to even attend these conventions. And I think that's something people should know about because, you know, people, I know people like Michael Clapper and others are trying to move medicine forward with this mentality of having more physicians as caregivers embracing this plant exclusive world that we're trying to teach. But the convention itself, has a, a vehicle where even doctors have been attending on scholarship students that are you know, in medical school so that they can start to have that kind of information in their education and training. And I, I think that's really remarkable too. And I think it, it sets the tone and it, it plants some incredible seeds for what can occur in the future. Right, and I'm so glad you mentioned that because the benefactor that makes that possible. I was just with him last week and I said, is that something you'd like to do again? And of course it is. So very soon I will be publishing that we are taking scholarship applications for two medical students again that can come expense free. This benefactor will pay for the cost of them to attend the conference and will pay for their hotel room. And we can discuss travel that could be included and so all they need to do is reach out to me at whuberman at healthscience.org, send me their resume, let me know what their interest is, and we will be selecting those two medical school students very soon. And, they, and, and, and Frank, we should mention, thank you to the pandemic. I am just thrilled that we, I would never, I don't know about never, but it was not on my horizon to do a hybrid. It's like doing two conferences, that we can do a conference in person for three to 400 people, and we can do it virtually for an unlimited number of people. And so we will once again be offering this as a hybrid conference. And people need to know that when you stream it the way that you do, I, I, I've got this word from people that have attended that, 
they feel like they're there. I mean, they feel like they're right in the community with everyone that's really there in person. And I think it's remarkable how you've created that blend and that hybrid in a way where everyone feels connected. So the community expands and using using media in the most positive, healthy way possible to really have people connect and embrace in a conference with where, truthfully, over time, I've attended these conferences going back into the 1970s, the level of scholarship, the level of information, the quality of people that are now speaking at these conferences are beyond my wildest imagination. I mean, Mark, you could probably agree with me that going back, we could, I don't know if we could have ever, you know, prophesied that we would have this kind of level of quality of people that are just so willing to come and share their information on that forum and on that platform. And, you know, you mentioned earlier, Frank, that what has changed dramatically is that the leaders of this movement, uh, Dr. Benish, Dr. Scott, Dr. Gross, these people that were the founders of our movement, they knew experientially, they knew empirically from their observation, the patients got well on this diet and lifestyle. But now science backs them up. And uh, that's what's really pretty thrilling uh, to, to see the validation of that. But to see, uh, I, I, as you say, every year, uh, the quality of the speakers that we get, they're not just zealots. These are scholars. They're authors. They're, they're, they're really articulate, wonderfully articulate spokespeople for this movement. I wanted to add one more thing about the conference, the Frank, that, again, you and I have been going to them for a very long time. We literally grew up in them. But I think the thing that is still true today, even with all the growth of the lifestyle medicine, the whole food, plant-based health movement, for so many people, this is still a pretty lonely operation. There'll be a wife, but not the husband. There'll be the, 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 the girlfriend without the boyfriend. You'll be single people. It can still, you know, I, I, we, one that I like to joke that in this lifestyle, you know, we don't get invited out to dinner a lot. And a lot of people don't even come to our house for dinner. But when you come to our conferences, it is really an inspiring thing to be around three, four hundred like minded people eating together, sharing their stories together. And even doctors like you that have been speaking at these conferences forever. As you mentioned earlier, it's like coming home for you. So you're sitting in the audience. You're sitting at the meals like everybody else. It's not like Frank flies in and gives a speech and goes home. That's not how it works in our conferences. It's not how it's ever worked. It really is a family, but uh, aside from the family, it's a sense of community. And I think that's what Wanda has, has fights for, works towards more than anything else to create that sense of even the way we arrange our tables, the way we do our buffets, even the way she's arranged with a, a very unique thing. Our meals at our conferences, our conferences technically start on Friday, you have dinner on Friday, breakfast, lunch, and dinner on Saturday, or breakfast, lunch on Sunday. Wanda came up with the idea a few years ago to work with the hotel. So if you come in Wednesday or Thursday or you stay over Sunday or Monday, she works with the hotel to create SOS NHA compliant meals that you can buy a la carte at the, at, at the hotel. So you don't have to run out to Whole Foods. You don't have to have a cooler in your room. You come and it is a whole wonderful weekend experience. And Again, I just think that's something that we've kind of had a patent on in the NHA for, well, this is going to be our 75th year, but we're doing it so much better. And I, I, we, we could kid, Frank, we want to wax nostalgically, Whole Foods in the old days at our banquets meant peppers and tomatoes and lettuce and maybe an avocado. And don't forget that baked potato, Mark. Don't baked, forget, baked potato baked was potato. where we really grew up. But Remember the guests, they had their cargo pants, stuff in those pants with potatoes at that bar as much as they was, We gave definition to Whole Foods. But right now, now, SOS free cooking and, and meal prep and has become so, so mature. And we were able to demonstrate that at the conference. And you know, something Wanda's always saying, too, that that we we know we we stand for an SOS free diet. Our meals are SOS. We present the gold standard, but we know. Not everybody, it's a journey for almost everybody, but we set the standard at the NHA. We're there to show you what it can be, what you can't, and it's the goal that I think you want to get. That's what we do at our conferences. As you say, the speakers are great. The meals are- And I'll add to that too, that when we talk about that sense of community, 
believe it or not, you know, many of the, the physicians and doctors are in their own ivory towers all year long, too. And so when we get together, it's also a chance for us in a communal sense to interact with friends and colleagues that, you know, we don't get a chance to really talk and interact with. So it becomes such a forum for a community on so many levels, even on a professional level, we can share ideas and while we're still presenting, you know, information to the population. And it would be important if I could mention, the conferences don't happen because I have an idea and it just happens. They happen because we have an amazing support team. When you come to the conferences, you see the same dedicated volunteers that are at the book table, that are answering your questions. And so there's a whole host of volunteers and staff. And as the staff is growing, it gives us more opportunity to grow. So I am so fortunate to have that support behind me that makes this happen. Wanda, you touched on something before, and I just want to bring it up a, you know, a little bit. And that is, you've also, in a way, in a very quiet way, are transforming a little bit of the destination travel kind of component for people. Right. Because now you're, you have the NHA sponsoring these cruises to really exotic places in the world where people can eat SOS free vegan meals while they're traveling and experiencing this, this exotic adventure out in the environment and in nature. Talk a little bit about you know, your motivation and your drive to even have that happen through the NHA. So I'm really trying to listen to what our members ask me to do. So if you have ideas, this is a great chance to say, send me your ideas, we'll talk about it. And what happened a number of years ago is one of our life members is a travel agent. She's also an RN and she's seen amazing things happen through this lifestyle. And she said she had never worked, she did, couldn't imagine working with international chefs to make travel. So she, as much as both of those travel and this lifestyle are important to Lisa McCarroll, she was never going to marry the two until she came to the conference and saw how well the chefs did the food. And so I said, yeah, we can, she asked if I would work with the chefs. And so we gave it an inaugural try pre-COVID, went on a river cruise from Germany to Amsterdam and it worked out beautifully and it's just been growing. So now we work with Windstar and they are, they're working with me that they're gonna, they do our travel. We had a hundred people go to Alaska recently and they're going to make it possible if you travel just as a couple, they will have NHA compliant food available. It won't be to the extent of what the NHA cruises are, where you have full salad bars and room service and excursions. We're going in February with Lindblad and National Geographic to the Galapagos Islands. The ship holds 96 people. The entire ship will be whole food, plant-based, SOS free. There will be no meat served to any attendee on this ship. It's all gonna be whole food, plant-based, SOS free with National Geographic experts telling you about the climate and the birds and photography experts. So this isn't, these aren't cruises for education about this lifestyle, but they are cruises to experience great vacations with like-minded people where you can go to a lot of locations and you never have to worry about the details. You know you're going to eat well, you know you're going to travel with like-minded people, and you know you're going to be on wonderful ships going to wonderful places. And so far we are selling out. And um, again, you can go to the webpage under the events and it's got cruises lined up through 2024 and we're already working into 2025. Well, as an old biologist, the Galapagos is on my bucket list. I got to make it happen sometime. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Uh, do you or Mark have any final words of advice or words that you want to share with our listeners? Any advice, any information? I, I, can, I can say, Frank, that I can't wait to start listening to the Health Science Podcast hosted by Dr. Frank Sabatino. I have, as I mentioned earlier, I find you um, one of the most thoughtful, wise, um, modern-day, truly pioneers of the of the lifestyle medicine that has come into such fashion. You've been doing lifestyle medicine before people invented the word, uh, and you've been you you personify veganism um, as long as anybody I know. You just are a man for all reasons and a man for all seasons, and I think you're going to do a magnificent job 
on the podcast. Not only do I want to listen to the, the, the remarkable list of guests that you've got lined up, I just like listening to your baritone voice. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I look, this has been a great, wonderful, wonderful interview. And I just want to encourage our listeners to, you know, go to the uh, websites, go to the uh, come to the conferences, understand the, the incredible impact of the benefits of membership. And I urge you to, uh, you know, to follow the NHA and the information about those sites will be in the notes for the podcast. I really, really want to thank my dear friends and guests today, Mark and Wanda Uberman. It's been such a pleasure having you. It's been such a great way to kick this off. And to our listeners, I really want to thank you because without you, none of this could really happen. And I really am so grateful that you're part of this active community with the NHA. And uh, I'm Dr. Frank Sabatino, the Director of Health Education for the NHA. And, and, and on behalf of the NHA, I want to uh, just welcome you and, and thank you for attending. And I look forward to seeing you on the next podcast. You've been listening to the Health Science Podcast, brought to you by the National Health Association. Thank you for joining us today and for your commitment to evidence-based health science that backs a whole food plant-exclusive lifestyle and contributes to the well-being of all people, animals, and our environment. I'm your host, Dr. Frank Sabatino. Be sure to leave a rating and a review, and we'll see you on the next show.